All right, there's never enough time. Uh, I probably have enough time to introduce our, our topic this morning and then we can finish it up for next week. So we'll take a little bit of time to do a quick introduction uh, and then I'm going to send you on, on out of here because of the, the sake of t for the sake of time this morning. All right, so we've been looking at understanding the kingdom of God and we've been taking the gospel of Matthew and breaking it apart and making it plain to look at the Bible from a kingdom perspective. Uh, and, and last week we started on Matthew chapter 7, a little bit from Matthew chapter 6, uh, but today we're looking at a slightly new topic where we are, we're going to be looking at the kingdom foundation for relationships. Uh, and notice it's the, the singular word foundation because this is something that is the foundation for every single solitary relationship no matter what type of relationship it is, whether it's a relationship between uh, you and your parents, you and a classmate, you and a friend. Uh, anybody, uh, no matter what a relationship is, there is a specific foundation that Jesus reveals about kingdom-centered relationships that we want to make sure that we exhibit in our lives. We're going to explore that. Uh, we'll introduce it today, and we'll talk about it next week. So here's the major thing that we're trying to answer. We're trying to answer what is God's design for how we should properly relate to one another. There, there, there is no way uh, that we can be about doing the work of the kingdom and glorifying God in what we do without relationships. Relationships are extremely important. And, and some of us are very, very good at developing relationships and creating bonds with other people. We're very good at inspiring and influencing other people. Uh, some of us, not so much. We've got a few things we have to work on. But the principle that Jesus reveals in the text that we're going to look at this morning is such a powerful principle that if you simply apply this one thing to any relationship you have, that relationship is, is going to have a bigger chance at being a lot more successful. Uh, very simple principle, and many people have tried to take it over the years and twist it into something else, but the truth of it still remains uh, in God's Word. So let's begin in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. The Bible says this, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds, and to so the one who knocks, it will be opened. Uh, verse 9, or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? And then it says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And then finally, verse 13, enter by the narrow gate for, gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Now, you might sit back and ask, what in the world does any of that have to do with relationships? But in reality, the whole entire thing is about relationships. Remember when we were at the end of Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6? Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, when it was talking about uh, don't judge unless you be judged, and it talked about how if, if you can't get the, the, the beam out of your own eye, how you're going to get the speck that is in your brother's eye. So there's no place, there's no position for you to judge because all of us have heart issues that we're dealing with. Uh, so th that part of the scripture was talking about what we should not do in relationships. This part of the scripture is talking about what we should do in relationships. He said, you should not judge, criticize, or look down on others because they do not measure up to your standards. You, you, you should not impose your knowledge on others. So we, we don't have a place where we can criticize people, where we can judge people because they're not like us. Now, that doesn't mean that we just take a hand off and let people do whatever they want to do and everybody is, is happy-go-lucky and we just have a free-for-all. It, it doesn't mean I can't correct people. It doesn't mean I can't say things to people to help preserve their life when I see that they're doing wrong. It doesn't mean I can't do those things. But what it means is that I am not trying to practice Lord and God over that person and trying to force them to live according to my mindset. Now, that's important. Because one of the things that we're called to do is to evangelize. We're called to share our faith. We're, in call, we're called to influence the lives of others with the kingdom of God. But if we don't learn how to do that effectively, we're going to have problems. Because I know way too many people who have the right message, but they have the wrong method. 
you're never going to win anybody over for the kingdom of God. You're never going to influence them in their lives if you don't know how to approach them with what you believe. And when Jesus made that statement, when he said, don't cast your pearl to swine, he, he was simply saying, don't impose yourself on others. Don't impose yourself on others. You live your life. You live according to the word of God. You live according to the principles of his kingdom. You carry out his purpose. You carry out his will. And you let God do the working on people's heart. You have the place to influence, but God has the place to change people's heart. And so there's a place that we hold in relationships. And Jesus said that position is not to be putting others down and making them feel bad because they are not aligning up with our standard for living. Now, we do have to provide correction. If I see somebody living wrong and I have a relationship with that person, or if I see somebody doing some kind of injustice and I'm in a position to do something about it, those are times when I do have to stand up and get it. But that's not what Jesus was referring to in this scripture. He's saying intentionally stepping on others, thinking that you are better than them. He said, you're not better than them because just like they have problems in their heart, you have problems in yours too. And if we could open up your heart and see what's all in there, you would look just as bad as the person that you're trying to step over. So Jesus is saying, if you just forget about all of that and just care for one another, respect one another, love for one another, you'll have a peaceful life. So we're not in a position to judge, to criticize, or to look down on others, nor to impose our faith in them. So, so when we get to Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 14, we're focusing on what we should do in relationships. We're focusing on what we should do. It's real easy to focus on what we should not do. You know, we refrain from doing this and we refrain from doing that. We hold ourselves back in this situation. We hold ourselves in that, back in that situation. Uh, it's easy to talk about what not to do, but we also talk about what are we supposed to do in a relationship that we have. And, and keep in mind now, this refers to any relationship. I'm not, when we say relationship, I know sometimes we only think about romantic relationships. That's only one type of relationship. But this works for romantic relationships or non-romantic relationship, friendships, parentships, whatever kind of ship you got, whatever kind of relationship it is, it works for every last one of them. So Jesus is telling us, what are we supposed to do in our relationships with one another? But he, he begins this uh, in, a, in a very interesting place. And in fact, instead of jumping to the beginning of this scripture, I actually want to kind of go to the middle in verse 12. Remember verse 12, it says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Two things here that we can't ignore. One of the things he says is, whatever you want done to you in a relationship, that's what you should do for the other person. Whatever you do not want done to you in a relationship, you should not do that to the other person. Now, if you can imagine, if we just follow that one simple principle, one simple principle, how our, all of our relationships would be changed. Is, is there anybody in this room that, that, that want to be talked badly about? Anybody want to be criticized? Anybody want to be put down? Anybody want to be beaten? Anybody want to be abused? Anybody want to be neglected? Anybody want to be hated? Anybody want to be mistreated? I'm not hearing you. Nobody, right? Nobody wants a relationship that's going to handle them and that's going to hurt them. Nobody wants that type of relationship. But how often do we do it to one another? How often do we allow words that come out of our mouths that will cause another person harm? But Jesus is saying that in the kingdom of God, that's not how we do things. In the kingdom of God, we have respect for one another. And, and this goes all the way back to our very first chapel message that we had when we talked about the importance of identity and the importance of understanding who we are in the kingdom of God and the importance of understanding who we are in God's eyes. Because I need to see you the same way God sees you. Because if I see you the way that God sees you, and I know that God loves you so much that he, that he gave his only begotten son just for you, and that while you were yet still a sinner, he died for you. That means that God loved you while you were still in your mess. God didn't say, I'm going to wait for you to clean your life up and make it perfect. He didn't say, I'm going to wait for you to get your act together and, and, and learn how to make straight A's and learn how to be the best behaved student or learn how to make your parents proud. He, he didn't say, I'm waiting for that. He didn't say that. He said, no, I'm going to love you in your middle of your mess. I'm going to love you right where you are. I'm going to care about your life no matter what condition it is. If God does that for me, imagine what would happen if I did it for somebody else. I, I may not like your attitude, but that's all right. I'm not going to mistreat you because I don't like your attitude. 
I don't, I don't like the fact that, that, that you don't give me compliments. That, that's all right. I'm going to give you compliments anyway. I don't like the fact that you're discouraging me, but that's fine. I'm going to encourage you regardless of how much you discourage me. Jesus said it doesn't matter what they do to you. It matters what you do to them. So just because somebody else does something wrong to you, Jesus is saying it, that doesn't fit in the picture at all. What matters is how you ought to treat them. That makes a little bit of sense. It's not about what they do to you. It's not about what they do to you. It doesn't matter. I know your mama taught you something different. Your mama taught you that if anybody talk about you, you better talk about them back. Your mama taught you that if anybody hits you, you better hit them back. Your mama is wrong. <laughs> That's not what Jesus said. He said, we don't live like that. We don't do eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. You do eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, everybody ends up blind and snag a tooth. If I'm always trying to get somebody back for everything somebody does to me, all I'm going to do is build up hatred. All I'm going to do is tear down relationships. That's not what we're here for. We're not here to tear up relationships. We're here to build them up. So she said, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. How they treat you is not a qualifier in this picture. Now, let's be honest. It takes some boldness and some courage to obey that scripture, doesn't it? It, it takes some real guts to do what you're supposed to do regardless of what everybody else is doing. It, it, I'm telling you, it is difficult to love somebody in a relationship that does not love you back. But Jesus said, you have to learn how to do it because that's the way we do it in the kingdom. The world will only love people who love them. Jesus said, bless those that curse you. Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you. Jesus said, love your enemies. That's a strange statement to make. Because this person doesn't like me, this whole world is messed up, and I'm supposed to love them? Jesus says, yes, because their life is just as important as yours. So Jesus said, whatever you wish that others would do unto you, do also to them. Here's my second thing, and I'm done for today. For this is the law and the prophet. That's a powerful statement, a powerful statement. He said, this is the law and the prophets. When, when Jesus make that statement, what he's really and truly saying is that this is what it's all about. He said, if you go all the way back to Moses, if you go all the way back to the prophets, the things they prophesied about, the things that they talked about, the things that they longed for, he said, this fulfills all of that. He only said that about one, one other thing. And that was when he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And he said, for on this hangs all the prophets. In other words, it doesn't matter how good you live your life. It doesn't matter how good you live your life. Jesus said, if you lack love, nothing you want to do in the kingdom will work. Your prayers won't work. Your faith won't make a difference. And you'll live a very ineffective life wondering where is God when you need him. And the problem is that not that God is not with you. The problem is that you left God when you strayed from his word and refused to follow his command. That's what makes a difference. Everything works through this. Whatever you're praying for, whatever you're serving God for, whatever you're striving for, whatever you want to accomplish, Jesus says this. He says, nothing will work until you get this piece in place. Because on this part, he says, hangs all the law and the prophets. The whole entire foundation of the word of God hangs on this one thing. And that's your ability to love people who don't love you to care about those who don't care about you, to try to make a difference in somebody's life who doesn't really make, want to make a difference in yours at all. He says to be who you are supposed to be regardless of what's going on around you. He says that is what makes a difference between an effective person and an ineffective person. A person who's going to fulfill God's will and a person who's going to miss the mark. That one thing, we'll take it apart next time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to begin to unfold the truth of your word. Father, will you let your law rest in our heart that we might love you, that we might love others, and that we in turn may teach others to do the same. Let your kingdom come in this place and let your will be done 
Until we come together again, bless us, keep us, and challenge us, Father. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all have a good day.